Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour Phyrexia coming to you from Philadelphia, USA. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us wherever you're tuning in from around the world. We have just seen an excellent reverse sweep from the Duke himself. Wow. Yeah. Taking down current world champion Nathan Stoyer. I'm in alongside Corey Baumeister. What a match indeed. Is anything going to top that this week? You know, I have faith in the rest of this top eight. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of really good action. But yeah, wow, what a great first match. Seeing that pivot between going with the combination and the Hole Breaker Horrors. I was uh, as blown away as I think everybody else was there. Unbelievable stuff. What cool, composed approach to, you know, being. 0-2 down in the yeah. first one, but you know, we've got another head-to-head -to, -head to focus on right now, friends. It is Shota Yasaoka, Mr. Cool Calm and Collected himself, versus Enigmatic Fires in the hands of Derek Davis. So this is going to be an interesting matchup because you've told yeah. me Rakdos Midrange doesn't particularly like Enigmatic Fires. Yeah, so a couple things Rakdos Midrange doesn't really like. One, the type enchantment. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of ways to deal with that in general. Feed the Swarm being one of the main ones, but not played in Shota's list. It also deals a lot of damage. So not only Fires of Invention, but Enigmatic Incarnation ends up being excellent against Rakdos. So yeah, Shota found his way in at the number one seed and found a number eight seed that is probably one of the worst matchups for him. Yeah, and yeah, you know, I, I don't imagine he would have faced much of this, if any, during yeah. the Pioneer rounds, yeah. which he, you know, had an excellent record through. But uh, as we start this, Derek Davis is up a match, or is up a game, excuse me. Duress taking care of Fable the Mirror Breaker, one of the most powerful cards in the format. Yep, and we're going to see a little bit of a slower game plan here. You know, you don't see the turn one green time walk as we've been seeing in other matchups. It's going to be a more grindy matchup that we are going to be seeing. There is a little bit of ramp here. Wolf Willow Haven to speed some stuff up. The ideal draw for Derek is to be able to go something like turn two Wolf Willow Haven into Enigmatic Incarnation if Derek picks that up. But we did see that Duress dealt with um, Fable. And now there is no other cards in hand at the moment. But let's see what Derek drew. Can hope the top of the deck plays nice here for him. Bone Crusher Giant, a big threat on the board, and there is Wolf Willow Haven and <laughs> Enigmatic Incarnation. What Ooh, a yeah. top deck. So now we get rid of the two drops and we find a three drop, usually a value one, Moon Blessed Cleric, to go and find another enchantment to put it on top. You see Leyline's Binding being the case here. You see a Bant Triumph with a Mountain, so this is going to cost two. No black mana available, but two mana, six drop, which then translates into a seven drop. Mm -hmm. I love this deck, Ailey. It's so and cool. You know, seven drops, they're kind of fun, especially yeah. when you get them for free, essentially. And there's a couple of uh, really nice options on the top end of the curve here for Derek Davis. You know, you could just start stealing land, stealing permanence, whatever you yeah. want with a card like Agent of Treachery. You can get a big old building and just start swinging things. Yep, so. absolutely. It looks like we might have uh, yeah, taken taken it back there. Maybe that was the initial choice, decides to get Fires instead. Fires does go up to five for a plethora of more of five uh -huh. drops. Ooh, Shildred. Oh, Shildred the Apocalypse. You always like, you kind of wince when she hits the battlefield. This yeah. card is an absolute beating in a lot of matchups. But you know what? I think Derek has several ways to answer yeah. this card. A lot of matchups, this not being one of them. There's so many ways to deal with it. Uh, it is probably going to be one of those cards that's sided out because not only the four Ley Lines Binding, but there's also four Chain to the Rocks that are available for Derek here. So eight, most of the time, one mana ways to just deal with this card. Mm -hmm. Ends up leading Shota to really gonna have to pivot and play more hand disruptions yeah. and stuff like that. So here is Fires of, Inde of Invention, allowing you to play a second card. Yep. Looks at how many lands you got and lets you play some free stuff. The only real downside is, well, you can only do everything on your turn. So sorcery yes. speed, friends, rejoice. Yep, you can only do stuff on your turn unless you do have a bunch of triumphs. We see at least, I'm seeing about 10 triumphs. So when you get to this next turn for Derek, you can play two things if you play your fifth land mm -hmm. and then cycle some lands or, for instance, buy Yorian. Yep, channel also an option at instant speed if... Uh, he wants to do anything of the sort, but as the match stands right now, things are looking pretty good here for Derek. If I, if I were to uh, hazard a guess here, which way this match is going to go. So there is Cavalier to be able to take that down, and then a 3-3 Golem will mm -hmm. replace it. 
Ends up being another solid answer for Shieldred. And then yeah. once Cavalier of Dawn is on the battlefield, anytime you sack a two mana enchantment, you can always go get a mimic and copy it, do it again. <laughs> so the you, you see this kind of snowball magic and yep. this enigmatic incarnation deck is really, you know, the the top dog of that style of play yep. because if you don't deal with everything right as it comes out or yep. have a plethora of counter spells, the deck just runs away. Oh yeah, and you know, Rectos historically and you know very well known to suck at removing enchantments very there's only so, one yep. card in black that can remove an enchantment yep. so not something that shota has access to as we're going to take another look in the hand see what shota is up against here there goes a mimic most of these decks and derek's deck included does play a second mimic ends up being incredible especially if you have yorian on the battlefield which we might see uh, next turn, at least being able to buy it. The fires is gone, so you're not able to play it. Blood Tithe Harvester and the Blood Token on the board now. So a presence being presented here from Shota, but there's a big old Cavalier on the other side that is damn near impossible to get through for these creatures. Yep, it is a very tough creature for Shota to deal with. There's some Dread Boars. Uh, two Dread Boars, some Lilianas, and yeah. if you get that, you can really tell that Shota's list is geared to beat a lot of the other matchups. Oh, for sure. And even in the sideboard, does not really have any hate for this one. In Pioneer, with such a diverse field, there's some matchups you just have to give up. Yeah. You know, you just can't be prepared for everything. And looking at Shota's sideboard, uh, this one is not really at the forefront of his mind. Mm -hmm. Enigmatic Incarnation was one of the very much lower decks yeah. on our metagame in, in the other category. Yeah, certainly um, a, fringe, instance, yeah. a fringe list. But, Absolutely. you know, once again, Pioneer proving to be a format where if you have the reps with a deck and you're comfortable with it, you can do well with it. Plenty of pros have echoed that sentiment this weekend. And exactly. Derek Davis is proof of that. Exactly. Derek won a Mox event, but, you know, to qualify for this event with this deck. So mm -hmm. if it isn't broke, yeah, don't fix it. So there's another Moonblessed Cleric to put fires on top to be able to get another five drop. What are we going for next? What's next on the shopping list here for Derek? Some of the options. Oh, Kenrith. This is still game one, so there's that, plenty perhaps. of thing. Yep. Kenrith is an excellent one. New edition Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. Mm -hmm. A lot of great options at five. I think you mean Panharmomicon. <laughs> That's good. That's okay. good. Sweet card. I'd love to see it. Make an appearance here on the Sunday stage. Just remind us, everyone, this is best three out of five. Derek up a game at the moment and shielded the apocalypse. Back on the battlefield here for Shota Yasuoka. All right, so we'll see what the pickup is here. Yorian was bought, so I believe we get to see my favorite turn. Oh. Fires into the beautiful bird serpent. Yorian goes. Let's get some triggers. And now there is going to be a cool interaction here mm -hmm. with the way that Enigmatic Incarnation and Yorian loops work. If fires were to be exiled, you can actually return it and then sacrifice it. But okay. since Derek wasn't planning on playing anything else, didn't exile fires because there was no need. Okay. So what you're telling me is Yorion has a bounce house. Yes, yes, absolutely. And we hear Derek saying, I choose not to use um, the fires, really saving it for oh. Leyline to be able to play, probably on one of these golem tokens, so you have a, you know, quote-unquote empty Leyline. Yeah. And then you can sack it for a 7-drop, Titan of Industry, or Agent as the two options. Yeah, tokens have proved to be quite important in the Pioneer meta, and uh, just, you know, having the ability to recast Leyline or, 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 you know, bounce it with Yorion, or yeah. even, as you mentioned, going and finding a 7-drop. It's just free removal. Absolutely. Same with Chains of the Rocks. Mm -hmm. You get to do that with that. <laughs> so if you hit tokens first, even hitting blood tokens, yeah. no, the, probably the number one target for tokens for Chain to the Rocks is the Shaman token of yeah. Fable. That, oh, yeah. that ends up being incredible. Plenty of goblins get got by that, I'm sure. Turn passes back here to Shota. 17 and 8 is the life totals between these two players. So certainly dealing damage, but as it stands, there is a lot of defense. Exactly. On Derek board. Yeah, having to deal with Yorian and Cavalier, and Cavalier having a die trigger when it, we're able to bring back an enchantment, so it's a card you don't really want to deal with. It's just really spelling all bad news here for Shota. This is a really rough matchup. Yeah. Here but, you know, you, can't, you can only prepare for so many. There's not one single deck that absolutely dominates the field. So this Rakdos midrange deck has served Shota very well indeed. 
and just unfortunately came up against a pretty bad matchup. Agreed. And here is an attack that's forcing through five damage. Mm -hmm. So really uh, giving Shota a chance to maybe double stomp, push through some last damage. But mm -hmm. this isn't a very profitable attack as Shota is going to lose three creatures yeah. and Derek's only going to lose two, leaving Shota with two quote-unquote creatures, one being the Muta Vault, which is a mana, um, it, which costs a little bit of mana to fire up anyways. Yeah. So Shota is really looking for the deal this damage to you, yeah. knock the top of the deck and try to find some direct damage. Exactly right. Try and get this game over and done with before we see any additional life gain, any additional, you know, big hitters. Gonna get a trigger there again. Let's go find a five drop. Probably Tulsimir here to gain mm -hmm. some life. It's to insulate yourself from that plan a little bit. You just really don't want to die to double stomp here in a game where Derek is yeah. just in such a commanding position. Oh, yep. Kenrith the same. You can also just gain three or gain yep. five life with that. Uh, since you don't have to use your mana. Know, and yeah, right. There you go. And that's going to do it for that game. Derek Davis able to find a way to shout out Shota <laughs> in game number two. So let's yeah. go to game number three and see if Shota can get a game here against Derek Davis. I mean, reverse sweeps, they happen yeah. all the time. 100% right? of this top eight so far has been reverse sweeps. So, uh -huh. I mean, it, it would make sense that we are still live here. All right. Kick things off. And disruption. Let's see what is available. We see a shield red, excuse me, we see an Elish Norn. Yep, we got uh, Bitter Reunion, Chain to the Rock, Fable, and Fires here. Bitter Reunion ends up being an excellent mm -hmm. card here. Just not only being able to loot away a couple of cards, uh, most of the time looting away those silver bullets that you could draw, you know, the, the one-ofs that you really don't want. To be fair, after sideboard, uh, Derek gets to take out a lot of these cards that are not so good. Maybe yeah. Archon of Sun's Grace being uh, one <laughs> deputy attention, detention. Some of these anti-aggro cards, but also giving stuff haste yeah. really can come in play when you're trying to close out a game. Yeah, pretty sweet card there from Brothers War. And quite good in the limited format too, but it is going to be Fable the Mirror Breaker once again. That card has caused many headaches for many Magic players. Absolutely. It's printing. And so we're going to kick things off here for Shota with a Blood Tithe Harvester. So we'll see. Derek was missing one key element, and that was a couple more lands. Had two lands with a bit of reunion here, so more than likely going to be fine. Decides to just chain to the rocks now. Plethora of mountains. Most of the <laughs> lands are mountains. You, you have some other ones, other triumphs that aren't. Um, but chain to the rocks, one of, if not the best and most efficient removal spell in the format. It just really has a deck constraint. Having to have mountains and white, you know, in this Boros shell, not necessarily what you always see in this format. Nifty piece of removal in mountain heavy decks for sure. As we see a battle of the Fable of the Mirror Breakers, one of them for show to this time. The other one's hanging out in the graveyard and there is the card you mentioned, Bitter Reunion. Enters, discard, draw two cards. Yep. Love to see it. We saw... Okay. Discards, draws a couple of cards. Definitely looking for land. Playing that first leads me to believe that we probably didn't have the land. Found one uh -huh. to go with it. And now Derek is really looking for the best possible draw next turn is fires into Enigmatic Incarnation. Whenever you can do that, you feel, <laughs> you feel on top of the world. Yeah, pretty unbeatable. Pretty much. Fires is a fair magic card. Fires is sure a fair <laughs> magic card. We've seen it in the past in these yeah. Jeskai Fires lists with other Cavaliers, Cavalier of Flames, yeah. stuff like that. Luca Fires at 1.2. Exactly, yep. We've seen a lot of that. And, you know, if the combo decks are anything to go by, playing free spells is, uh, is quite good. Quite good, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and speaking of combo decks, you know, these kind of Fires of Invention decks, that's exactly what you don't want to play against. Mm. You want to play against mid-range, 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 a couple aggro decks you don't really mind, yeah. um, but the combo decks, Lotus Field, Is It Creativity, Mono Green, those are the scary ones for, create, or for uh, Enigmatic Fires. A couple points of damage there to Derek Davis, down to 18. Treasures made, and here is the Apocalypse once again. Wow, we've survived through several Apocalypses. <laughs> several, like, absolutely. Yeah. Are we cockroaches? I guess so. We might be. <laughs> but yes, Yoldra, just a powerhouse okay. card. Gonna get some dings in and pad the life total here. And there's a Fires. Okay, not the 100% ideal follow-up, but Fires being an excellent pickup here. Mm -hmm. One of the cards that was not seen for Thoughtseize, so that's one that was picked up. To be fair, Derek did draw about five cards, so it's not 
too <laughs> out of the realm, but this is Shieldred surviving for a turn, and mm -hmm. when Shieldred survives for a turn, that is always six damage, unless Derek has the upkeep Ley Lines Binding. Oh, yeah. Which is still an option, even with fires on the battlefield, you can cast it really whenever. Mm -hmm. uh, but with it costing six, you do have to just actually pay mana for that. Yeah. But it is still only costing one mana, so it's not too <laughs> much of a cost. But next turn, we're probably going to see this fires Yorian shenanigans going here. And even on surface value right now, if Derek has a land, is able to play a spell, mm -hmm. buy Yorian, play Yorian, blink out Chain to the Rocks, give Blood Tithe Harvester back, and take Shieldred, yeah. and then blink out Oath of Chandra, bring back Oath of Chandra to kill the Harvester that was brought back. Or Reflection of Kikijiki, either or. Yeah. I mean, yeah, what's the, what's the biggest problem at this point? So. Definitely Shieldred, yeah. Oh, yeah. the second Shieldred, one, yeah, probably second, Reflection. Sorry, the yeah. second biggest problem, sorry. yeah. <laughs> Let me not take that uh, crown from Shieldred. Definitely yeah. a big problem. Absolutely. But life total's still pretty healthy, so Derek Davis doesn't have to panic just yet about getting dinged to death by Shieldred the Apocalypse. So let's see how this turn mm. plays out. So I believe we are waiting on Shota here, and this is probably the longest we've seen show to have mm -hmm. a think about this. So a real, you know, planning out that not only this turn, the next few turns, and what is the way I close out this game. Yeah. And show to thinks it is being aggressive, as aggressive as possible. Yeah, time to switch into Rakdos aggro mode. Down to 10 goes Derek, courtesy of the damage as well as shield red. All right, turn five from a Fires of Invention deck when you get to untap with that card is the reason to play the deck. Follow up here from Shoti Yasuoka, the Hall of Famer. Just absolutely cool as a cucumber the entire weekend. Bone Crusher Giant joins the battlefield. All right, and here we go. Yes. After he finished his uh, magic yesterday, he went and played some more magic. Just decided, <laughs> you know, I'm going to do the arena. The arena play in. Yeah, yep. yeah. Why, why not? On his phone, just in the hall still to still take top eight pictures. I mean, if that's not the coolest <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> Oh. No, this oh. is Elish Norn with Yorian. Okay. Oh. I'm the most jealous human being ever. Oh no, yeah, I bet you are. Let's uh, let's double some triggers, shall we? So two triggers exiled the fires with the first one. It looks like, mm -hmm. and then this. I'm, I have two Yorian triggers. Yes. I, yes. This comes back. Oh. Yes. Right. So bouncing things. Oh, don't get a blood. Don't yep. get a blood token. No yes. triggers. Yeah, I get presents, but you do not. So look at this. The reason that Derek did this, this is really smart. So now you stack the triggers where the fires is going to come in second. Yeah. So Derek does not have a Ley Lines Binding right now. Mm -hmm. But if he were to find it off this Bitter Reunion, there's been two spells cast this turn. But there is not a fires in play right now. Yeah. So if he finds Ley Lines Binding, he's able to play it for one mana, get two triggers, exile two things with it, and then fires comes back into play. Oh my goodness. And I'm pretty sure Bitter Reunion triggers as well twice. Yeah, that'll trigger twice. This is insane. Oath of Chandra will trigger twice. Yeah. Trigger, 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 trigger. Getting trigger happy, as it were, with... <laughs> and Fanhar, this is, and Yorion. This board is completely decimated. You might yeah. see Shota just pick it up right now. I, d I don't see how he comes back in this. A hope and a prayer at this point, but uh, yeah. Derek Davis just proving why this deck is the bane of Rakdos midrange. Just able to decimate this battlefield. And Shota is left looking at an empty board yep. right now, barring two artifacts. Yep, and there is showing the mastery of the deck that Derek Davis mm -hmm. has been playing this deck for a long time, knows exactly what to do with the deck, knows when I have Yorian and Elish Norn, which is already a corner case, exactly what to do. Yep. So a really, really impressive stuff here. Liliana minus player sacrifices a creature, but so many creatures to play with there. Gotta take Kenrith. Kenrith discarded with a thought seize, but that's all Shota can do at this point. Yeah. I mean, Derek just... doesn't have that much going on, though, to be fair. Just the Moonbless Cleric. That's not a huge follow-up here, so we're definitely still playing Magic. That does trigger twice. Yeah. kind of awkward because it does just put, um, you know, one on top of the other. It's not like you get to draw two cards with this. You're just putting two enchantments on top. Mm -hmm. There he goes. Liliana the Veil taken care of. Moonbless Cleric triggered twice. Go find two enchantments on top. Now, how does that work with having to shuffle? It'll be your go after 
You, uh, yeah, so first you put one on top and then shovel. So the way it works, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> you cool. only get one. Um, I believe you do still have to resolve them both. So you're going to resolve yeah. the, oh, no, it is a may. You may, sure. Um, so it just says no to the first one. And, the, the and then put the second enigmatic one. incarnation on top for the second. And then that gets ridiculous with mm. Elish Norn <laughs> if we get to that next end step. Oh, my goodness. And here is the brutalist thing. You can't thought seize the top of the deck. So nope. Shota knows it's coming, but can't, can't do, anything do anything about, about it. it. Yeah. Fortunately, no instant speed. Hand disruption. Just yeah. has to say, go. And uh, Derek Davis looking poised here for a 3-0 against a Hall of Famer in Shota Yasuoka, who had an excellent tournament. Excellent weekend. 12-1. and one. 12 and 1. Just, you know, got unlucky here in the top eight. Yeah, unlucky with the matchups. You know, I mean, didn't even get unlucky with the games. Had very functional hands, at least the two games that we saw. It's just that bad. It's that bad of a matchup. We were doing some things with Derek Davis. Has to do 14 points of damage to show to Yasuoka to wrap things up here. Has haste enablers, so, you know, could just swing in here with something but let's see yeah. what it is we are able to do there is eight or seven damage coming in yep animate and block with the den of the bugbear and now we're going to see a couple yeah. triggers off enigmatic incarnation sacking the extra mm -mm -mm. fires here as well as one of the other enchantments and gets two extremely powerful things one thing that we can do here mm -hmm. I guess the Yorian is no longer around, but Mimic <laughs> would have been one. Oh, oh man. No. So this Cavalier can destroy your own stuff as well. Yeah, if you to need. get yourself a 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Let's see what he targets. Yeah. My fires of invention. Yeah. Both of Chandra. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay. Oh, man. You that got is it. so rough. <laughs> yeah, just targeting the uh, extraneous... <laughs> Enchantments on the board, just amassing. I mean, is there a board wipe that shows a good top deck here? I don't think so. No, and that's gonna not. be it. So, Derek Davis, a 3 0 sweep of the Hall of Fame. One of the best Magic players of all time. Unbelievable stuff there, Derek Davis. Congratulations, bringing a deck we didn't expect to see in the top not eight. All, you know, yeah. Statistically speaking, it shouldn't be here, but. Yeah. Derek Davis, piloting it excellently. And I mean, statistically speaking, the person in their first pro tour shouldn't be either be here either, but you know what? Uh, he said, no, I'll be here and I'll be the Hall of Famer. No problem. 3-0. So really impressive stuff. Excellent start to his Sunday. Let's hear more about it. Cedric is with Derek. I am here with Derek Davis, who is not only in his first Pro Tour, but now you're Derek on your first Davis Sunday stage, Davis. and you just beat Magic Hall of Famer Shoti Osoka with a bit of a brew, your awesome five-color deck. How the heck are you feeling, and how did you feel about the matchup? The matchup was really good. Obviously, I was a little worried with the fact that uh, he is such an out outstanding player, um, but if I had to pick a deck in the room to play against, it was that one. Um, they just don't beat, like, if you ever draw enigmatic and start getting value with it. Um, so felt about as good as I could against him uh, <laughs> for, for what that's worth. And uh, and yeah, it, it went about as it should in practice where enigmatic hit the table, um, two games out of the three, fires at the table in the third. And I just got to get value out of those cards like crazy and um, just got to run away with both, or all three of the games. Well, your road doesn't get any easier, as is commonplace of the Pro Tour. Uh, you're going to play the winner of Reed Duke and Nathan Stoyer. Of the two, dare I say, which one would you rather play? I would much rather play against Reed. Uh, I have an abysmal matchup against Lotus Field, so much so that uh, there's, in the 80 cards, there was one card meant for Lotus Field before, and it was Archon of Maria, and I moved it to the sideboard because I just said, I'm not winning against Lotus Field anyways, uh, so what's the point of having it in the main? Uh, I'd rather be better in other matchups first. Uh, I would much rather play against Creativity, as long as I uh, play how I should. Uh, I think game one or pre-board, I guess I should say, is pretty easy for me. Um, Leyline Binding's hard card for them to beat, especially if you have a plan for the make disappear, sacrifice the worm, make three tokens. Uh, Post-board, it gets a little harder, but uh, definitely a much better matchup than field for me. So, Well, we're going to see who Derek ends up playing against. Maria, back to you.